Innovative, tough, and downright reliable. And can you believe he's single? No, nope, I'm not talking about my buddy Zach Job. I'm here to talk about the off-road king of the Dakar Rally, the OG SUV that left Wranglers, patrols, and land cruisers quaking in their little boots. It's been selling like hotcakes for almost 40 years, but now the company making it is in a bit of trouble. So what does the future of this legendary 4x4 look like? And more importantly, how did it get here? Well, let's find out. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Mitsubishi Pajero. Pajero! I thought it was called the Mitsubishi Montero. That's right. It's also the Mitsubishi Montero. The Montero. I thought it was called the Mitsubishi Shogun. Yes, the Mitsubishi Pajero, Montero, and Shogun, whatever. They're all the same car. It had a lot of names. In this episode, we're just going to say Pajero to keep everything simple. You guys might notice that I'm uh, a little sweaty in this episode, and that is because it's about 95 degrees in Los Angeles today, and we're not going to slow down at all. Still bringing you content, more videos, actually. Got one every day. Hit that subscribe bell to make sure that you don't miss any of it. And also, I'm going to be in the freaking comments for the first hour of every video that I make, and so will all the hosts. So if you don't hit the bell, you won't get notified to when the episode is going. All right, chapter one, the dirty origins. Before we really dig into the Pajero, I think it's important for you guys to know the rally racing clout that Mitsubishi earned before the term sports utility vehicle was even a term. You see, the World Rally Championship, the WRC, as you may have heard of it referred to, was founded in 1973. And since Mitsubishi had already been collecting podiums with their Lancer 1600 GSR, they figured they'd give the new WRC thing a shot. And in 1974, they saw their first victory at the WRC Safari Rally. Out of the 20 manufacturers in that series, Mitsubishi was sixth overall with a total of 34 rally wins between 74 and 2002. So, uh, I think they know a thing or two about tearing up dirt. <laughs> Now, back in 1973, Mitsubishi was sipping on green tea and happened to look out the window to find land cruisers and patrols ruling the hillsides. <gasps> I want to do that. I want to do that too. All right, tomorrow morning, I will be at your house at 6 a.m. We are going straight into making a car that can tear up the hillsides like those land cruisers and those patrols. Dude, I am way ahead of you already set an alarm. So whiz, bang, boom, they got to work making their own version of a go anywhere people hauler and the Pajero concept debuted at the Tokyo Auto Show in 1973. It was essentially a stripped down Jeep wannabe with no doors and no roof. And like most concepts, it didn't go anywhere. But 1979, they returned to the Tokyo Auto Show with a second Pajero concept called Pajero Concept 2. Now, it may have looked like a Suzuki Samurai and a 1995 Honda Passport did the fusion dance, but people loved it. And by 1982, the Mitsubishi Pajero launched all over the world. It was designed to compete in the competitive off-road 4x4 market, but it was more all-purpose than the competition. I mean, look at this luxurious interior. That is... I changed my shirt because I can see myself over on my computer and I thought it made me look fat because that's a 2XL and I used to wear 2XLs, but now I wear XLs. So anyways, check out that luxurious 80s interior. This thing was stuffed with a bunch of high tech stuff like coil springs in the back instead of traditional leaf springs. In the 80s, in an SUV, it had adjustable suspension from the factory, two speed, part-time four wheel drive, and even the seats 
had freaking shocks on them. You could get one in a two or four door. You could get it with a four speed auto or a five speed manual. And there were a bunch of engine options, but the one that you really wanted was a three liter V6 making around 140 buff hearse purse and around 168 pound feet of torque. Sure, could have used a little bit more power, baby, but it was enough to get you off road. Now, Mitsubishi advertised the Pajero as a vehicle for everyone, from tough terrain lovers to trout enthusiasts to families looking for a nice everyday commuter. It was marketed the same way SUVs are marketed today, except they were doing it way before anyone else was doing it. Chapter two, the king of Dakar. Now, at the same time Mitsubishi was making the all new Pajero, about 185 thrill seekers were getting together in Paris, France, and were about to embark on, in my opinion, the greatest rally the world has ever seen. Oh my God, dude, are you talking about the Paris to the car rally? You know I'm talking about the Paris to the car rally. Man, I freaking love the Paris to the car rally. Sandstorm, sandstorm, sandstorm. <laughs> And since Mitsubishi was advertising the Pajero as the ultimate adventure vehicle, what better way to prove it than winning the Paris Dakar Rally? So they entered a Pajero into the 1983 event, and after a grueling 12,000 kilometer race, the Pajero placed 11th out of 385. And that was an almost fully stock car. And after that, the hits just kept. French driver Patrick Zanaroli and co-driver Francia Jean de Silva dominated the absolutely brutal terrain on their way to winning the now legendary 1985 Dakar Rally. The footage of this race is honestly insane. Rock climbing, huge freaking jumps, and tearing up the freaking coastlines. I want to do that, you guys. And Mitsubishi had proved that it had built the ultimate adventure vehicle, and that's now backed up by a Guinness World Record. I'm serious, Mitsubishi holds the record for most victories of a Dakar rally car between 1985 and 2007. They won it 12 times in 32 years. I freaking love the Dakar rally and I think I wanna do a whole entire episode of Up to Speed on it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys wanna see that. It's either one of those things where like, it's gangbusters and everyone agrees that they want to see it or it's like one of those things that like hey we don't ever heard of this maybe we don't care so uh honestly let me know so i can convince all my friends to let me make it chapter three a mitsubishi evolution let's go ahead and fast forward nine years the suv market was leaning heavily into luxury you know i'm talking land rovers lexus i all those fancy cool cats and kittens and after years of killing the off-road game mitsubishi thought God, Mr. Shouty Bad, always shouting. Shouty, 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 shouty. So soon after, the 1991 second gen Pajero appeared, and boy, did this guy have five star amenities. I'm talking dual zone climate control, I'm talking four way adjustable front seats, a rear designed third row, heated door mirrors. You what? Heated side mirrors? I'm embarrassed to ask this question even, but is this a freaking Rolls Royce? And if you thought Mitsubishi was only upgrading the interior, <laughs> think again, pal, because the second gen came in four. <laughs> That's right, four different body types. All right, you got the metal top. No one's a metal top. You got the canvas top convertible, the semi high roof wagon, and of course, the high roof wagon. You didn't get all those options here in the States because, well, you know, us, right? Mitsubishi also stuffed some very impressive tech under its sleek 90s body. The Pajero now featured multi-mode ABS for finer braking control as well as three mode adjustable shocks. That's called driving modes, baby. You know, that sounds boring. That sounds like I shouldn't even put in this episode, but back then that was really impressive stuff. Now the second gen Pajero was nice, but the best was yet to come. <laughs> 1997 marked the debut of the Dakar homologation special, dubbed the Pajero Evolution. Honestly, it's one of the sickest cars ever. Now you guys know, probably if you watch this channel a lot, and if 
this is your first donut video. Welcome. I hope you like it. Uh, if you watch it this far, honestly, you probably do like it. But look at this freaking thing. Oh my lord. Box flared big wing. I'm gonna get for I'm gonna get from your guys' angle. Oh, it's cool. The evolution came with a 3.5 liter my vec v6 making 276 naturally aspirated buff hearst purse it had four wheel fully independent suspension an aluminum hood and a factory skid plate they only offered it as a two door and all my math boys know two doors weigh less than four doors it looks like a genuine race spec and to no one's surprise it performed like one driver Kenjiro Shinozuka was the first Japanese driver to achieve an overall Dakar win at the helm of a Pajaro Evo in 1997. Then, German driver Jutta Kleinschmidt was the first and still to this day only woman to ever win the Dakar Rally in 2001 behind the wheel of a Pajaro Evolution. And with an ever-growing trophy case, Mitsubishi introduced the third generation of the Pajaro in 1999. This Pajaro lived up to its namesake and won the Dakar Rally five more times. It stayed on top thanks to its new unibody monocoque chassis. They also shifted the engine's weight behind the front wheels, making it a front mid-engine car and moved the gas tank in front of the rear wheels, giving it perfect weight distribution. It is a race car SUV. I want to own one of these one day so bad, so bad. This is my daddy car, even though it's only got two doors. <laughs> but then in 2006, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Chapter four, where do we go from here? Mitsubishi launched the fourth gen Pajero, but America didn't get it. From gen three to gen four, the Montero badge had been quietly dying as Americans began to fall in love with crossovers instead of big SUVs. And to make matters worse, the Pajero, the king of Dakar, hadn't won since 2007. So the fourth gen Pajero is almost 15 years old. It's a freaking sophomore in high school at this point. Now that's a crazy long time to make a car without making a single change. They're on sale in around 70 countries, but Mitsubishi is struggling right now. Check out this episode of Wheelhouse and only they know what the future looks like for the Pajero. Now, it really, really bums me out that America didn't show it the same love that Japan, all of Asia, the Middle East, South America, and Australia, and Europe did. The rest of the world loves an adventure car. So, what's wrong with us? Hey guys, we've worked really hard in the past to provide you with a bunch of really cool shirt options, this one included, but up until this point, I wanna apologize because We've left your legs out of the mix. Out of the mix. And I don't wanna leave anyone out of the mix. We're all about community here. So starting now, we have Donut. How do I do? How do you switch in regular gear? Sweatpants. They're so new that I don't even have a pair. These are really high quality. We spent the extra dough on them um, and they're comparable to like our hoodies, um, but they're for your legs. They say PE, which stands for performance education. I know, it's very funny and very cool. I came up with it myself. They're great in the car. They're great to uh, sit around and play Zelda, ask my girlfriend. Uh, and they're great to you know, sit in your garage at your workbench uh, and do conference calls and make videos alone. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Go to donutmedia.com, cop yourself some. I can't wait to wear mine. I can't wait to see all your pretty little buns wearing yours. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Up to Speed. I love you guys and I want you to be here with me. Uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow for my other show, The D List. Uh, hit the subscribe button. I know every YouTuber says, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. But uh, honestly, we're putting out so much stuff right now because we're all just going crazy at our houses. And um, I'd love for you guys to be a part of this crazy time right now. All right. I love you.